Hey everybody, welcome back to another Godot tutorial. Today we're going to talk about one of my favorite parts of game development and working with Godot, and that's animating characters. What we're going to do is take a sprite sheet, and out of that sprite sheet we're going to divide it into different defined animated series. We'll call them cycles or animation cycles or something. Uh, Godot has a wonderful tool for creating these kind of things and managing them and staying organized, and that's called the animation player. There are a few other ways to do this in Godot too. There's a, a node called um, animated sprites and um, a few other different ways. But the animation player quickly became my favorite because I like to do a lot of animations. And in that, you got to stay really organized. And plus, the animation player comes with like a really nice UI that's easy to use and play with. So I'm excited to show that to you today. By the way, if you're new here, my name's Drew. I teach people how to get into game development. If you're into that kind of thing, please hit the subscribe button. Let's get started here by creating our actual character that we're going to work with. So as usual, I'll hit this plus button, go over to, I'm going to choose another other type of node. And just like we've seen before, kinematic body 2D, that's a good choice for a character that moves around the screen. We're not really going to do much movement, like physics movement today, but we are going to do a lot of animating. So that's common. common. You need that in kinematic body 2Ds for your characters in your game. Uh, and just like before, I'm going to add a few layers. I'm going to just ignore the warning about the body, collision body. We don't need that today. Um, but I'm going to add two layers, one for the sprite. It's going to be like the actual appearance of our character. And then another one for our um, another sprite. But this is going to serve to be the shadow of our character. And I'll just layer them properly. Uh, as usual, I've prepared some. Let's go ahead and uh, save this as character. Uh, like I said, I've prepared some images for us to use like I normally do. It's been brought to my attention. I, I've been doing a bad job lately of leaving those in the description as a download. My bad. These will be in the description if you want to download them and follow along with me right now. So the first thing I'll do is have our sprite layer selected here, and that will reveal our empty texture slot over here. I'm going to grab demo RPG character, which is one of the assets I prepared, and plop it into the texture. And now we'll see it appear on screen. And until this point in these Godot videos, if you've been following along, we've only been working with images that are uh, kind of like one cell large, meaning they only have one thing in them. This is a sprite sheet where we have many different frames of the same character. And so uh, by default, Godot doesn't know that we're dealing with a sprite sheet. So what we need to do is configure our sprite over here. There's an animation spindly thing. And we need to tell Godot how big this asset is. Uh, and the way you do that is by rows and columns or V frames and H frames, like vertical and horizontal. So this asset here, we have uh, five rows going across. So vertically, what we're going to do here is pop in five. And then you'll see that Godot kind of um, already uh, starts cropping this thing for us, which is good. And then each row is four frames across. So in H frames, we'll hit four, enter. And now you see that our character has like appearing at the correct size that we want. It's also kind of fun to come in here and sometimes just play with the wrong value. And you can see that if it looks weird, like this isn't a perfect square anymore, it's likely that you don't have the right values in here. So just if something looks off, just double check these values, make sure it matches up with the asset that you're using. Zoom in on our character a bit. And now I'm going to add our shadow. So I'll select the shadow layer over here. It's already selected. And uh, pull in our shadow asset to the texture. And now this shadow is not a sprite sheet. It's just one frame that's 32 by 32 pixels. So it'll line up just perfectly with one frame of our character sprite sheet. Now the next step for us is to introduce the actual animation player node. It's going to be the star of our show today. So I'll go add child node and search for animation player. You see a few different hits come, but yeah, animation player is what we want. Create that, and that can live just right next to our sprite and shadow. So quick intro to the animation player. You see if I click it, we get this new area down here called, um, this is like the workspace of the animation player. And in here, there's this is a drop down that's currently empty, but we can create animation cycles that we can then apply to whatever we want in our scene tree. So what I'm gonna do is click the animation button and say new. And this one we'll call walk down. And then you see after we did that, we get kind of this timeline sort of thing down here uh, where how what animation player does is it allows you to select any node and then within that node, any property of that node and plot out values for that node over time. So for example, right now we have a sprite. It's starting only on frame zero, which is the top left frame of our sprite sheet. Uh, but over time, we want to show frame zero, frame one, frame two, maybe back to frame one. Uh, and then start the whole thing over. And so that's what we're going to walk through today. So to do that, I'm going to add track. Uh, and this is going to be a property track. 
The first step is to select the node that we want to animate a property on. And so for us, that's going to be our sprite. But again, you notice you can select anything in here, which makes these tools really powerful. And we'll walk through some of that in a bit. But I'll select Sprite, hit OK. The next question is going to be, on our sprite, which property do I want to animate over time? And for us, that's, again, you can see everything that you can normally tinker with in the inspector over here is available here. Um, but for us, like I said before, we're just going to use frame. And now we get a new track, kind of like you know, video editing, audio editing, whatever. A new track that we can right click, insert key, and then um, create different points on. If I select one of the points that I've created, the inspector will uh, show the value for it here. So the value for the frame on this one is zero. But if I come over here, insert key, select the second one, and go ahead and change the value to one for the first frame in our sprite sheet. Again, they start from the top left and go to the right and then count their way down. So one will be like the one to the right of the first one. Um, now you see that um, the character, when I put the cursor past the last step on the timeline, the character updates to be that first frame. And so if you just drag the cursor around, you can see that the frames are changing. So let's go in here and just add the next few ones. So this will be two and three. And now you see as I drag my cursor around, the frames change. I can also hit this play button, and that'll play the animation once. Uh, but this is a walking cycle, so we want it to repeat. Uh, so there's this little looping button. So the walk down will always repeat when you play it. So I'll click the looping button. And then also, our if I zoom in a little bit here, you see that our animation will go the length of what's highlighted here in the timeline. But what that's we've got a lot of like negative empty space. Uh, and so what I'll do is take this and change the limit to more like what we want, which I think is 0 0.5. Nope, 0 0.4. And then um, now we have the same amount of negative space after our last frame. So if I rewind to the beginning, hit play, you see that the character will kind of run and it keeps repeating evenly. Now this is a little bit faster than I intended, so I'm going to go ahead and just space them out a little bit more. Move you over here, move you over here, make sure it's nice and even. And then we'll extend our length out to where it goes. And now our pace is a little bit more natural. It is possible to change the speed of the animations with code too, uh, but for the sake of our tutorial today, I want to keep it nice and simple. Now we've covered the most basic animation coming from a sprite sheet. This is good and often it's enough, but let's have a little bit more fun. So I'm going to add one more layer up here to our scene. I'm going to add another sprite yet again. Uh, and this time I'm going to call this hat. I'm going to move hat to kind of right to be just above the sprite just for cleanliness. And what I'm going to do is pull in another sprite sheet to that hat. Uh, oops, sorry. So I need to select the hat, reveal the texture, drag it in. And now you see, I'll zoom out just a little bit. See, now we have a hat sprite sheet that goes four wide and it's uh, one row tall. So let's go ahead and plug in those values to our inspector. So vertical frames can remain one, but horizontal frames, let's go four. And now again, you see that hat um, snap directly onto the character, but it's not moving. Uh, see the character's head is bobbing up and down, but the hat's staying still. So let's go ahead and animate the hat along with the character. We've seen already that you can animate frames, and that's great. But like I said before, you can animate anything. So we're going to add a new track, another property track. And again, first question is, which node in the scene do you want to animate? For us, this time, it's going to be the hat. So I'll say hat. Then Godot will ask, OK, which property do you want to animate on the hat? And for us this time, it's going to be position. Now that I've done that, you see that we get a new track on our timeline, this time for hat's position. It does a nice job of kind of organizing where everything is for us. I'm going to stop this before I drive myself nuts. And here I'll uh, right click, insert a new key. And this time, before we were dealing with a frame, and that value is just like the number of the frame that should be showing right now. Uh, but for position, Godot knows that that's of type vector 2D. So when, when we inspect that stop on our timeline on the position track, the inspector knows, OK, a vector 2D has a x value and a y value. And so we can use that and change it over time. For our first step, we just want to stay right where we are, because what we see on screen looks correct. Uh, but I'll insert another one. I'll just do another few. And the way this sprite sheet works is when the um, the character steps forward, his head goes one pixel down. So on Y, we'll say one. And then uh, the third frame, we're back up to the top. So we can leave it at the default where it was, which is zero, zero. 
But then our fourth one, we'll go ahead and also change that to one because it's also how the sprite sheet works. The head's bobbing up and down. Now you see when I move my cursor around, the head, uh, in fact, we'll just play the animation in loop mode. The hat will bob up and down, but something kind of funky is happening. Zoom in just a little bit more. See that uh, the position is like animating to its next spot. It's not just jumping there. If you were making a game that had more like illustrated characters that had a more bubbly feel, this might be appropriate. But for us in pixel art, it uh, uh, just looks kind of funky and kind of weird. It's kind of freaking me out. So uh, this spot right here, let's stop that real quick. Um, each track has these little drop downs next to it and see that uh, our frame before already defaulted to this value, but our hat position track defaulted to a transition type of continuous, which is basically gonna uh, you know, if you're going from zero to one, it's going to animate all the way there and get all the sub points between zero and one. We don't want that. We just want to jump from zero to one right on that node stop. So we'll just select discrete. And now that that's selected and I drag, you see that the hat moves with the character. So we'll play it again. See, now it looks like a real animation. And this is really cool because now that the hat is a separate layer, uh, you can toggle it on and off. So imagine in your game, you can unlock a hat. Well, if, if you have the hat, you just turn the hat on. Or if you wanna get a different hat, find a different hat, you can just change out the texture of this hat layer and it's already set up animating for you, ready to go. So that concludes the first of two videos about the animation player. We're gonna dive into part two right after this, uh, where we're gonna learn about adding different types of animations and getting the animation player itself to do more things. We've covered sprite frames and positioning right now, and those are great and can be very powerful, but this thing can do way more. It can even fire code at certain points, it can play sound effects, it can do a lot. Uh, so we're gonna dive into that stuff in the next video. Thank you so much for watching this. Like I said before, if you're interested in game development, please subscribe. If you learned something here, I really appreciate it when you hit the like button. And uh, if you're making a game yourself, be sure to hop in our Discord. We've got a community of people that are uh, making and playing indie games. So if you're into that kind of thing, please come hang out with us. Alrighty, thanks a lot. Catch you in the next video.